Pulitzer Prize-winning Ukrainian journalist Mstislav Chernov witnessed the dawn of Russia's full-scale invasion from the first city to be destroyed, Mariupol. He remained there with a small team as the only eyewitnesses. Here's a clip from his new film, 20 Days in Mariupol. This is painful to watch. But it must be painful to watch. The documentary is taking film festivals by storm and is developing some major Oscar buzz as Ukraine has officially entered it for the Academy Awards. And Mr. Slav Chernov joins me now. Welcome to the program. In some of the voiceover, you say, because the film obviously focuses, like many of you know, our work, on civilians and on the distress yeah. caused to civilians, yeah. you say, note to editors, graphic content. This is painful. This is painful to watch, but it must be painful to watch. Uh, that's the nature. If we don't report everything as it is, if we don't show to people across the world, to our viewers, to our audience, uh, the reality of war, it becomes acceptable. We, it's, it's a big danger not exposing the war for all its brutality, for all its absurd. And if, if it's polished, if it's sanitized, then it's acceptable. And that's, that shouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. Immediately there was an information disinformation war. Immediately the Russians said these are actors, these are, this is, you know, Ukrainians shooting themselves and blowing themselves up. How did you deal with that? Or did you even know that was happening? When I saw this horror that happened in, in maternity hospital this, after the bombing, I, I knew that it would be such an important story. And I already knew that it's going to be contested, questioned, and I knew that as journalists, we shouldn't try to fight any of that. We just keep working. That's the only way. And let me put, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the clips, because it is the clip that essentially went around the world of the woman being carried out of the maternity hospital. Let's just watch this for a moment. <laughs> So I see you watching and, and essentially you're back there. Yeah, I'm, I don't even have to watch. I remember every moment, every drop of blood. But I want to say that that's exactly why we need documentaries. First, it adds very, very necessary context, a part of news, which are very short form. The context give viewers and an audience a possibility to, uh, to make their own judgments. And also, with all the horrifying and very important tragedies that are happening uh, when we are bombarded by them every day, uh, these important stories are just lost. Mm -hmm. So the only way to preserve a memory of, of Irina, of Evangelina, of Ilya, Kirill, all those children have died, uh, is to make a film about it. So to be sure that the memory is there. Did she survive? No, no. no. And, oh, and her child has also died. Yeah. So what do you want to leave the world with, particularly as the world appears to be taking its eye off Ukraine? Look, I have, a, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that when I'm on the ground in Ukraine, we, we, I, I monitor Russian news as well, and I monitor Ukraine news and the world news, and I frequently come to US and, and Europe to, to speak to the audiences. And one thing, one thing I, I've started to notice, first of all, everything is connected. And although very different conflicts, Israel, Gaza, and, 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 and Russia attacking Ukraine, 
they are universal stories, but contextually uh, they're different and complex, although again, connected. But also I have a feeling that a lot of people in the West don't really realize what, how Russia sees the West and the, this whole war right now. You see, Russia has build, is building its policy, its ideology right now, since its full-scale invasion, as uh, they are at war with US and with Europe. So imagine this, the Russian government and majority of Russian people right now are at war with Europe mm -hmm. and US. They're fighting with Ukrainians, but the core ideology they have is they are at war. And I feel that that's not really coming through and it's very dangerous. So do you find this is resonating with the audiences? What do the audience say to you at festivals? And I know you you know, there's a big Oscar push as well. Uh, surprisingly, I thought Ukraine gonna resonate less in, in the last several months as a new a big and dramatic conflict in the Middle East is, is raging. But actually, especially a story of Mariupol, because of, of its symbolism, because of its similar visual and, and uh, dramatic similarity to what is happening right now, uh, actually uh, gains even more meaning now. So people realize more and more that the world around them changed and they have to react. The, 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 the worst thing that could people do now is to be indifferent. And this certainly, certainly is not a film you can be indifferent about. Mrs. Slavchernov, thank you very much. Director of 20 Days in Mariupol. It's a really powerful, it's one of the best war films that I've ever seen. So congratulations.